Welcome back to the show. It is Road Dog and Cassio. You are listening to Oh, you didn't know. You, there he that, was, is. that was where you were supposed to go. Like, oh, it's the Road Dog and I'm it's Casio the Road Kid. <laughs> Somebody asked today on Twitter if you sold watches. And I told uh, him, I said, it was, I hope so, because I'm in the market. The big hey, calculator ones? Yeah, I'm not sure. I need that kind. I was going to uh, go use lame keyboards, but I'll do watches. <laughs> I'll step up to watches. Yeah, yeah lame. They weren't lame. They were kind of cool, those Casio ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could, do, you could do like a Mark Ronson thing where you just... <laughs> um, but yeah, how have you been, man? I'm good. I uh, I love getting feedback on the show. Uh, you know, last time we, we got together, you said... We'd been reading a lot of messages about how good chemistry we had it. Uh, and that's the first time good in chemistry has ever been involved with my name. With you? But, okay. Uh, now I, I took got... a bunch of drugs. So me and chemistry <laughs> You're good. have gotten, have got, well, we didn't get along for years. I can tell you that much. Well, I'm I sorry. Got to... I interrupted you. I, I got called a um, clone rad this week. Clone rad. I thought, so I saw that. <laughs> um, and I saw that you had posted something. I thought it was hilarious, but I didn't think it was you. I had to go on there and dig a little and found out like, it was you. It was and I, hilarious. It was, yeah, it was even more funny. Um, and, and I just thought, so somebody called you that? That's what yeah. I thought you came up with that. No, yeah, I'm not smart uh. enough for that. I, but I am smart <laughs> enough to change my name. I love how, man, that's funny. It can't be Casio. Um, that's <laughs> got to be somebody else no uh, i just remember yours was the uh, cassius clay or what it used to whatever, whatever cast, it was big cast big cast yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and, you, and it's it changes frequently i feel like you go through monikers <laughs> like uh like i go through depends well nobody, nobody remembers me so clone rad well, thompson it, i think it's gonna be a while clone rad i thompson. love it i love clone rad again the worst team i've got the here is a conrad ripoff yeah. And a hillbilly. And I'm like, buddy, I I'm in on that. Yeah. Yeah. They're batting a thousand to be quite <laughs> honest with you. And so, so, so are My you. dad called me. That. Yeah. 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 Those are terms of endearment to tell you the truth. My dad called me a lot worse. I can assure <laughs> you of that. Um, and he loved me a lot. Uh, but, but like, it's, I've, I've read stuff like that. Like, Oh, could you guys, could he get any more Southern? Southern. Like, <laughs> that's what I heard. And I thought like, hmm, I don't think so. Uh, he's from the South. It's pretty South, pretty far yep. South. Yeah. Um, but look, that's just you and me. We're just some idiots talking. Some Southern boys talking we're about some, wrestling. Let's some do idiots it. talking about wrestling. What are we going to talk about today? Well, buddy, we got a good one. We're going to be going back to the rock and sock connection oh. and the reformation of the new age outlaws. Yep. Yep. Good. I want to talk about this today because we beat the rock and sock connection. And yeah. Yeah. And it was, was it mankind? Or which iteration of, of Mick was it? And, uh, oh, the rock and sock. So it was, it was uh, Mankind, right? Because he pulled the socko out. Um, so, yeah, we beat them. Uh, we beat Mick and Kane. We beat Mick and Al Snow. We beat Mick and Undertaker. Um, we beat Mick all, a lot. Me and, me and Billy. Uh, five of our title reigns uh, out of five of them, four of them, were because we beat Mick Foley. And so I kid him a lot and say you know the outlaws just had your number mick like no matter who you got <laughs> as a partner because that is a who's who of the attitude era those partners i just listed yeah. we beat them all <laughs> and i didn't again i did not mind re reminding mick of that uh when i saw him earlier all right let's crank this up we're gonna go back to party like it's 1999 uh, you surprising your baby face yeah Oh, man, huge baby face. They love me in 99. Baby what face. Are... <laughs> Road Dog wait, and Billy wait, Gunn is what a year? heel. Year what? 99. What year? Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> go, go ahead. Hot year for you, baby face, was, Road Dog. It was H-O-T, brother. Billy Gunn is a heel, and yep. X-Pac is a face, and yep. Triple H is the world champion, and yep. China is starting to wrestle more and more, but still with Hunter. And at SummerSlam that year in Minneapolis, you're not wrestling, but getting interrupted by Chris Jericho mm -hmm. and doing commentary for the hardcore title match. 
Did they run out of things for you to do at this point in time? What do you think was happening? <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. That's probably the, <laughs> the, the, the legit answer. Uh, let me get these marbles out of my mouth. Uh, kudos to, to Bobby Eaton. Uh, R.I.P. Bobby. <laughs> um, for real, though, I forgot the question already. So we were talking about, oh, oh, they ran out of do. stuff for me to do. I'm sorry. I didn't forget the question. I just had to think about it for a second. So, so yeah, they did run out of things for me to do. But in, in all actuality, I loved this. I thought this kind of stuff got me over way more than wrestling ever would the uh the well the match with with jericho like they brought him in and he and he we wrestled each other's his first couple of times in and he beat me to welcome his <laughs> welcome himself into the wwe um so i you know i forgot the question again what, you loved what was, it. i loved it you i loved, loved it. it you're not I having to wrestle you're doing other things well it was an opportunity for my uh I don't want to say character, but my my uh, Persona but, on my air. personality, I guess. Yeah. My personality could get out there in a way that wrestling can't do it. And even with a live mic, you kind of can't do it. This was an opportunity. Uh, the, the roving road dog thing was an opportunity for me to just kind of get my get to just to display who I am. And, and I'm entertaining. You know what I mean? Or that's yeah. how I thought I was anyway. The next other, night other people are watching and going like, ha, ha, buddy, <laughs> <laughs> you were high. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the next night on raw, you get a hardcore title shot against Al snow. Yeah. This is all backdrop for Jericho to brawl with you and big boss man to kidnap Al snow's dog pepper oh my God. dog. Pepper. What did you think of boss man cooking up pepper son? Hey, if you cook anything right, it's good. You know what I mean? Like, Look, there's not a lot of meat on a Chihuahua. I'm going to be honest with you. I'd much rather have a Mastiff. You know what I mean? Get you a good sirloin. Get you a good... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is horrible. Uh, no, I... It wrecked it. Look, it was, it was crazy um, that they did that at the time, but it was also like 99 end, ending of the Attitude Era. And right. what do we do now? We've, we've done everything. Uh, everything, you know... Yeah, let's let's steal a dog, cook it, <laughs> feed it back to the person who owned it. Um, but you know, I guess that's better than the Jeffrey Dahmer thing on Netflix. Uh, that is pretty strong that you remember it was a Chihuahua. Oh yeah, you must have yeah, spent yeah, yeah. time with Pepper. I have Chihuahuas. I love dogs. I love okay. Pepper. Uh, Pepper was a sweet little girl, but she would bite you if you just went in too fast. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pepper had We've Pepper had some there. spirit. Yeah. Who hasn't been bitten by a <laughs> Female pepper. named Pepper. <laughs> Sometimes I pay extra, pay extra, pay extra for that. Fast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hunter famously won the WWF title that same night for Mankind after Foley won it the night before in a three-way with Steve Austin and Jesse Ventura as the special guest referee. Do you think that hurt Hunter's reign to have him beat Foley on TV instead of Austin on pay-per-view? Hmm. I don't think so. Look, I think even back then, more people were watching TV than they were pay-per-view. And, and, and that's that's to this day. Uh, I think that's the case, except for like a, maybe the big four mania or something. I just think people tune in on the week on the weekday. I kind of wanted to win all my titles on television rather than the pay-per-view. But that's, oh. you know, I, I get it. That that was the uh, that's the fault. And so I don't think it hurt his career. Um I do think it's weird. Like I'd love to spend a minute and, and digest all of that. Like, so the night prior to this night, Hunter. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. Just they had a three way. Yeah. Um, Steve Austin and Jesse. Ventura WWE after dark. I, I take it. Um, and then after that, he won the title that same night from mankind. So it was, it was, it. it was Mick Hunter and Austin in a three way with, Jesse Ventura yeah. as the yeah yeah, yeah 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 I don't remember all Only wins that. it yeah I don't remember all I knew is I didn't have to wrestle I could start drinking now you know <laughs> what I mean like that was my mentality probably at the time um but I actually don't remember don't remember that um but you know I don't remember so, but your your basis is it doesn't really matter if it's pay per view or television. It's I still don't a think thing so. And it yeah, I don't, to... and it still happens, and it's storyline. Yeah. The, the weird part to be even hearing it back was, uh, 
wow, they switched the title two times and in, in two nights. Yeah. Like it felt, it felt weird to me, but because we don't do that anymore, but they did that back then. And they did things like that. And, and I don't you know, I think it was a way to not have him work with Austin again and not have him beat Austin. And so, so I, you know, it's all, when you get up that high on the roster, uh, I, I didn't sit in on a lot of those conversations. Um, <laughs> and, and if I was supposed to, I guess I was pretty high on the roster at one point. If I was supposed to, I never cared to. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's <laughs> that's on me. On the SmackDown season premiere, you wrestled Jericho in his first televised match for the WWE, yes. which ends with a they disqualification. Cho they chose me. Of all people. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome him to the club. Um, <laughs> it ends in a DQ when he power bombs you through a table yes. and locks in the walls. There's been a lot of talk about how certain people didn't like Jericho when he first arrives. What are your memories of him coming in to the WWE? So I look, I knew Chris from uh, Smoky Mountain. And so yep. I had already experienced Chris. And look, I, I don't think he was that different than he is uh, right now. He was a very confident person. And he didn't mind telling you that. He was scrappy, too. He didn't mind fighting if you want to, if you want to hit get stiff in the ring he can do that if you want to work he can do that so i you know i think a lot of guys didn't like his attitude when he came here from wcw but i honestly think that had nothing to do with his attitude and everything to do with an outsider coming in and and into this really cool locker room that we really are everything's really well going well like we don't need uh any outsiders coming in here causing any trouble yeah. <laughs> you know but and it sounds like that but at the same time i think it was just hey what are these guys now here comes jericho okay in a little while here comes perry saturn and dean malenko and eddie and you know what i mean it was just like hey what's going on over here um and i think a lot of people looked at it like that i i I don't think I did look for a lot of a lot of years while I was in active addiction. I carried that with me that oh man, they brought Jericho in just to beat me and or they didn't bring him in to beat me. They put me in in the match just for him to beat me. And for years that bothered me because I was there and a star and he came in or I, I wasn't a star. I was a falling star. But he came in and, and in retrospect, I look at it now as an honor and a uh, a gift that I had like hey we're going to use you and your status to establish this guy coming in. It makes perfect business sense. But of course, I wasn't looking at it through uh, clear eyes or a business uh, lens. I was looking at it from a selfish, ego-driven, drug-addled uh, a-hole going, hey, you're going to come in here and just beat me? You know what I mean? And that bothered me for a while. I guess it probably bothered me until I got sober and realized that, oh, wow. Brian, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, but as a, and like you said, though, as a fan, we want us watching it went well damn he's he's beating road dog yeah he's, yeah yeah he's, he's coming he's right in and but yeah he's established and, yeah. and and so i look i think it, it it makes perfect business sense um again i wasn't looking at it through a business lens it's announced that this time you sustained a crushed disc in your back and you'd be out of action for a bit do you remember the reason you were taken off tv it's reported in the observer that you were going to record an album is that correct? Yeah, no, that's not correct. It was probably <laughs> probably more like I was going to rehab or, okay. or uh, and it was probably because I was dehydrated. Dehydrated. <laughs> you know what? That's the or I was. Uh, what's the one that the 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 stars always use? I was uh, exhausted for exhaustion. Oh yeah, exhaustion. I was put in for exhaustion, uh, which means I was running out of drugs and I had to. You get didn't me. crush a disc in your back. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember that to be quite honest with you. I don't remember a crushed disc, but I can't imagine since. Look, I did miss some time after that. And to be quite honest, I don't know what it was for. I, I used the drug thing because it's probably that was one of them. Um, and so that's where, that's where I'm going to stop there is because I think it probably was that. I did try to record an album, but I don't think it was then. Uh, and it was with, um, you, you know, I'm the Harris twins, Don and Ron Harris. Yeah. And uh, Sawyer Brown. Uh, what's that? Mark. Oh. Uh, what, what's Mark's on. last name? Mark. Uh, Oh, I can't think of Mark's last name, but but we went up to his studio and and recorded and stuff. And we so I did try to make an album, but I kind of screwed that up for myself because of drugs and alcohol as Mark well. Mark Miller. 
Mark Miller. Mark Miller. Amen. Um, the race yeah. is on, my friend. Ra yes, the race is on. And what a great entertainer he is. And what a beautiful spread he's got. And this was you know, 25 years ago. So, um, uh, was yeah, there anyway. ever Was there ever talk at this point in time of putting DX back together in 99? So I think there was probably talk about it just because it it went away and it was like there was still room for it. You know what I mean? I felt yeah. like we had legs still. Um, I think it was probably shot down because of, uh, look, they put me and Billy back together. We're going to get there here soon in a minute. But I think, I think it would, would have been a hindrance to Hunter. It had they put us back together. He was, he was moving up and moving into a singles world champion role, like the, the, face of the company and i don't feel i feel like that was sharing spotlight that he couldn't afford at that time and so yeah. i right wrong or indifferent i feel like that was probably talked about a great deal and then kind of decided well you, you can have the great faction back and you got a bunch of mid carters or we have the uh you know and, I, and that's i'm saying that hyperbolically like that's not we were mid carters i, I guess right. we were but but he needed that spotlight to be singular on him uh at this time and and yeah. so that's that's probably what the conversation how the conversation went. also at this time xbox sticks up for you against jericho but that doesn't really go anywhere at the same time rock and mankind have now teamed up to yeah. be the rock and sock connection and win the tag team titles at this point in 1999 what were your feelings on rock and foley yeah look i thought they were uh perfect I thought they were polar opposites and therefore perfect uh, as a team. Like I love uh, an interesting dynamic, a, a dichotomy, a two, two different, like headstrong people that have totally, they're totally different having to coexist and not only coexist, but, but stay together and work together to maintain the championships. You know what I mean? I always love like R Ricky and Robert. Okay. They're rock and roll express. They're the rockers. Okay. They're the rockers. But I always loved a team that was a totally dynamic, uh, with the chemistry Orton and, and riddle. Yes. Yes. To me, that's a, a great example. Orton and riddle. Like they just, they just work off each other. You know what I mean? And it just works. And, and, uh, that's what that's what the rock and sock was, man. I mean, we're, I'm sure you're going to talk to talk about next is the the the, the this is your life uh, episode where it it is the highest rated uh, segment of pro wrestling television in history. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, um, and and it was and it wasn't any wrestling. Uh, so I'm sorry if I stepped on your your you're headline good. there. We're good. Um, but that's what that's what it showed me about about wrestling was. And then I dug into the analytics later as a lead writer of the show, and you find out, well, talking segments always rate higher than wrestling matches. Like, and that's and that's pretty much across the board. Like, that's ninety nine percent of the time. Really? Yeah. yeah. And and it, and look, I to this I day, get it. If I yeah, if I get it, if I tune in and I see people are wrestling, I can turn away and know I can turn back and wrestling will still be on. But if I see somebody talking, I might stop to hear what that person's saying. And this is just me speculating. There's no, you know, I ain't old man Nielsen. I don't have the, my fingers on the pulse of how he came up with that system for the ratings. But if I see somebody talking to there, I, I may stop to hear what they have to say. Again, that's just me. But yeah, they always rate higher. And this was an entertaining segment uh, that went on for a while. And, and it was with two huge, huge stars uh, at the time in the WWE, you know. Um, well, speaking of, let's talk about it. In Let's get your uh, take on both of those guys. Is Rock in 1999, is he the best in the business at this point? Um, if he's not, he's dang close. And what um, about Foley? Because because he's rocks coming into his own now for sure. Like it's yeah. his catchphrases are pop culture. He he's he's morphed into he's bigger than than what we're doing. And and Mick, look, Mick was always great at every face of Foley. You know what I mean? And so it was great with him as Dude Love. My, we talked about that today and my wife still has a Dude Love shirt um, because she loves tie-dye. So so it's literally 25, 30 years old. It's it's horrible. We should throw it away, actually. But <laughs> she, she loves a shirt. Mankind, Cactus Jack. 
I love fighting them all. Um, he hit me really hard with stuff and I hit him really hard with stuff and we have a really good relationship maybe because of it. You know what I mean? And it was like, a we were willing to go to war with one another, um, in order to have a peaceful relationship. And that's really profound and not true at all, but we did really hit each other hard and stuff. Uh, there's a report at this time you were sharing an airplane with Brett Hart. Brett confronted you over <laughs> some things you said, the media, do you remember running into him at the time? I do. I love the question, though. It sounds like Brett and I are sharing a plane. <laughs> yeah, uh, just we're your just, private jet. We're just chartering from uh, Edmonton. <laughs> uh, we were going on a moose hunt. Uh, <laughs> no, so this is a true story, man, and it and it and it dumbfounded me, and literally it does to this day. I don't know what Brett was doing here, but I live in Pensacola, and and. Uh, it may have been Andrews Institute does a lot of surgeries and stuff on, on a lot of uh, uh, athletes and, and sports entertainers, professional wrestlers. So he could have been that, but I don't really remember what it was, but I just remember we were both sitting in first class and I got on and put my bag up and I saw him and I said, Hey Brett, how are you? And he said, good man. How are you? And I said, Oh, good, good. Where you headed? You know, we just idle chit chat. And before I turned to sit down, he said, Hey man, I heard you said Shawn Michaels was better than me. And what? I said, wait, what? And he said, yeah, I read and the Sean, you said Sean Michaels was better than me. And I said, well, I do think Sean Michaels is better than you. I said, I'm sorry that you, that I, I feel that way, but I, I love Southern style wrestling. Like Sean was trained in the South and, and Brett was trained in the dungeon and they're two totally different wrestlers. For me, I'm more into the entertainment than I am the wrestling. And so Sean was definitely, uh, look, great. And I mean, great at both the entertainment and the wrestling. Brett was great at the wrestling. Like, I just didn't think he was entertaining. And I want my guy to have some bells and whistles and and spin plates. And do, you know what I mean? And I, and I just, I'm sorry that I feel that way if it's offensive. You know what I mean? But like, I. I'm allowed to have a, I literally went back to my seat and sat down and, and thought, oh, this is the weirdest thing I've ever been a part of. Right. Like, I guess he read it on the dirt sheet or something. It was, it was really a strange moment. And, and I, he may not even remember it. Heck, I may not remember it correct. I may be telling it wrong for, for all I know, but I remember him saying, you said Shawn Michaels is better than me. And I, I said, yeah, yeah, I do think he is. Like, I don't know what to say to that. You know what I mean? I don't know. I didn't when you know said that. yes, did he just squash it? Did he just turn around? No, he was sitting down in his seat already, so he couldn't go anywhere. He just had to listen to me. I was standing up right next to his seat. Like, it just it just got weird, and I said, I, I'm sorry, dude. I don't know what's happening right now, and I just sat down. <laughs> it was it was dumbfounding to me. Like, it really was. And, and it, like, so I'd never seen that part of Brett, and I've heard that that Brett was very serious about his wrestling. You know what I mean? And I don't sure. I don't know. Uh, knock anybody who's serious about wrestling of course they're i'm very it's my whole life you know what i mean so i'm serious about it too but like i didn't i had heard stuff like that like he really wants to be the best there is the best there was and anybody who thinks different is wrong and i didn't i never saw that until that day and that, again it could have been a misunderstanding and i could be misreporting um but i'm not have you <laughs> no. have you um have you bumped into him since then? Yeah, a hundred times. And Nothing's happened. Nothing, not one thing. Like, it's never happened. Like it, it, wow. And look, I, I'm i glad it's never come back up either because I don't know why it did in the first place, and I don't know why it matters. Like, I, Bret Hart's 50 times the WWE superstar that I am. You know what I mean? And I got no qualms in saying that. Um, so it just felt weird for a guy that that high up to to feel that way to, to me anyway all right do you uh move forward you get to attend the mtv music awards with x Pac, uh steve austin and deborah yes remember anything about this any fun stories from the mtv music so x Pac and i did go backstage and uh and partake with some with some entertainers hmm. i almost got killed uh by lauren hill's 
security guys because I ran out of one room and she was coming into that room and she was barefooted and I stepped on her foot. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And the big guys, like, I didn't even have a chance to say, I'm sorry. I just got kind of shoved out of the way. And I was just like, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I was uh, sorry, Mrs. Hill. I'm a huge fan of you and the Fugees. Were you there because the uh, album you're working on was already nominated? Um, for <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it the was the, uh, the the greatest shits. <laughs> we'll cut uh, that part. You, out. <laughs> you're off TV. You're off TV yep. um, until SmackDown on September 23rd, when the New Age Outlaws are reformed. What did you think of the idea of putting the band back together? Had to be pumped. Look, I was pumped. I was thankful because I did not like working singles matches and I did not like not having a pillar there to lean on. You know what I mean? That's what I felt like my partner is on the on the apron. It's like I could lean on that. Like lean on it. I'm gonna cry. Um, lean but, on me. <laughs> yeah. When, when you're, you're not, not strong. strong. Okay, look, we're gonna have to get this together and work on okay. that. It's a work right. in progress, guys. Next, yeah. Um, that was the first run through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, I mean, we haven't even rehearsed, and I forgot the question. Bing, bang, boom. You're you pumped. Know? New age outlaws yes, are back thank together. God. I'm fat and lazy, and I didn't want to wrestle by myself. Bottom line. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so Billy was back, and we were going to win the tag titles, which I presume you're about to speak about next. Yes. Um, uh, were you? Did this come out of nowhere? Were there rumblings? Do you think Hunter pushed for this? How do you think this came about? I, I don't know. I, I look. I can imagine my mid card baby face uh, turn run whatever was mediocre. Uh, Billy's heel turn I thought was pretty good, but I think it got mediocre reviews, and I don't know who from. Uh, I don't know if that was a fan, the fans' thoughts, or if that was upper echelon thoughts right. um but but i felt like both of us were i don't want to use the word floundering but but the word not really doing anything you know what i mean that's, that's more than one word i realize cash is cash is clear <laughs> but, <laughs> but but i really felt like it was like okay we can do this we can get the titles off of mick and uh you know rock and sock because look i do believe uh they were more valuable individually than Billy and I were. So to me, it was put us back together, put the title on us, get them apart or get them away from us and they can go in a different direction. We can do whatever we did next. You did win it. Like you said, in the first match back, you take the tag team titles from rock and mankind. Mm -hmm. um, what do you remember of that match? So the one thing I remember of this match was that Billy Gunn, when he got the hot tag, he ran so fast that he shot Mick Foley into the ropes and Mick <laughs> fell down, but choked himself on the second rope like a 619. Boom. Popped right back up, though, in time to continue the spot and do it with, with Billy. And it, it, I would suggest either showing it here or go back and watch it or whatever, because he shoots him in. He's going so fast, and Billy Billy goes fast. And if you're not fast enough you'll get tripped up over yourself. And that's what mankind did here. Uh, I, I think it was mankind. Um, yeah. Took a bump, hung himself up on the second rope, yep. popped right back up and was right there for whatever Billy was doing next. It was, it was Look, I know that's, that's not what you'd think I remembered from the match, but I remember stuff like that because it's not what you expect. Right. You know what I mean? Like the other stuff, it all went great and we expected it to go great. That's why we put it together that way. You know what I mean? And so you remember that. You're, like, I remember the little things that didn't go so great. Uh, but that's hilarious. Just a few weeks earlier, Eric Bischoff is fired from WCW. You're fired. What was your relationship like with Russo at that time? So, uh, look, Vince and I were always cool. I, we've always been cool with each other, especially when I was working for him. And uh, the, the only time we've ever had a riff was over Twitter. Uh, and it was just because I, I was the lead writer of the show and I couldn't handle anybody else critiquing me. And so he caught the brunt of, because I knew him. So I treat him the worst, of course. Didn't he tweet uh, Bret Hart was better than you? And <laughs> yeah, so you got yeah. pissed? <laughs> yes. That son of a bee sting. How dare he? Has he not seen my greatest hits? <laughs> There's just one match. Oh, just one match and it's me getting beat. 
All right, so you 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 yeah, you've mentioned numerous times. You and Russo always had a great uh a time together. Yeah. Did you did you know Jeff Jarrett's contract was due to expire as well at that time? Did you, you say doo doo? Jeff Jarrett, your buddy. Did mine. you say doo doo though? I thought you said doo doo. <laughs> I just wanted to say it like doo-doo. four times. Doo-doo. Oh, do two, do two, do two. But I still said do two like five times. Do yeah, we got it. Yeah. So I we never knew much. <laughs> I never knew much about Jeff Jarrett and his contracts uh, because, as you know, uh, you get too close to them and they will slap the fire out of you. They will slap the mm. taste out of your mouth. Uh, but no, he he was always plays his stuff close to the vest and, and rightfully so he's a smart businessman. Um, so I never knew when his stuff was up all of a sudden he would just be gone and I'd go like, Hey, what happened to you? Um, and, and you know, that's the way this business works, man. All right, let's get into, uh, let's get into unforgiven dog. Okay. You and Billy would defend the tag team titles against edge and Christian. This is from the observer, your favorite. New Age Outlaws, New Age Outlaws, <laughs> Edge Outlaws uh, retain the WWF Tag Titles, beating Edge and Christian in 11 minutes. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in Below the Waist Grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topping. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer, and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use code D-O-G-G for free shipping and 20% off. You think your holiday spread is good? It's time to give thanks to the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you're going to find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Think of it as a cornucopia for your balls. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It also gives you the ability to turn this 4000K LED spotlight on and off when you need for a precise shave plus it's waterproof yeah that's right waterproof the performance package 4.0 also includes the weed whacker to chop your worst weeds up top in your nose and ear this nose and ear air trimmer uses a 9,000 rpm motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system to provide proprietary skin safe technology which helps presents prevents nicks snags and tugs to those delicious holes and you can't forget the manscapes liquid formulations the crop preserver ball deodorant and crop reviver toner spray are like the pumpkin pie and ice cream after thanksgiving dinner you can't live without it your balls will be living in turkey heaven with these formulations and as if this wasn't enough it's time to do the dishes with manscaped shower product that's right lather some of manscaped refined body wash on their new signature body buffer and give yourself the lather and rinse your body deserved. Lose the loofah and exfoliate your mates. No hygiene routine is complete without Manscaped signature deodorant as well. Yeah, a couple swipes of this and you'll be feeling oh so crisp. Gifting Manscaped is the ultimate hack to become the favorite family, family favorite, by the way. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code D-O-G-G at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code DOG. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gifts of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. And it's in nine <laughs> seconds. Match was fine, um, but was not right. on the level of most of Edge and Christian's matches of late. Right. I wonder what the key there was. It was us. We were old and past our prime. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I got no problem saying that. I, the Observer, I wish they would just say that. You know what I mean? Like they, they hee-haw around everything. Or you got the guts to say it or don't you? You know what I mean? You guys, you guys are old and slow, and you're slowing Edge and Christian down. I can take that. That's the truth. You know, you were known not to take a straightforward DDT. That's why at this point Christian delivered the reverse DDT. Oh, yeah. Oh. But then Gangrel and the Hardy Boys came out. 
Gangrel mm-hmm. and Matt attacked Christian and dragged him outside the ring. Jeff then delivered a missile drop kick to Whoa. Edge, allowing Gunn to pin him after a famouser. Yep. Two and a quarter stars. Ooh. I don't like that. I'd rather no. I wish it was like one and a quarter. If that was a you Google I mean? review, it'd be a bad review. Hey, but I'm gonna tell you, it's a wrestling review with me in the match. That's damn good. I think that's a quarter star higher than you. Right? Yeah, than I than I like that I feel comfortable with. You know what I mean? And still, we slowed Christian and Edge down. Uh, was Thanks, this Observer. A, was this was this setting up the Brood versus Edge and Christian? Yeah, tr- truth be told, you know when we didn't get a finish and we got all those guys down there, it was yeah. just to, it was just to set up. You know, the title match was a backdrop. You know what I mean? Was a potted plant for the actual story being told. I don't know what we did going forward, but surely one of those teams you mentioned interfering there beat us for the tag champ or tag titles at some point. Well, I can well, tell you this much though, it was not Mick Foley. <laughs> yeah, bless his was. heart. Bless his heart. Was. Oh, it was. Uh, oh, no, sorry. no, no. For sorry. once, you're, you're not facing him. All right, you got, uh, let's <laughs> tell us your thoughts on fighting, uh, working, excuse me, with Edge and Christian back then. Oh, they were great. I, look, they were great. They were better than me. And, uh, they, uh, Billy won't tell you they were better than him, but they were. Um, and, and look, they were the, they were, you know, wrestling was evolving and we were cool for that other, for that first, you know, 96, late 96 to 99, whatever. But now these new kids are coming in and they're doing, and they're doing stuff with the Dudleys and with the Hardys and with the, all these people that are doing these crazy TLC matches and stuff. And I can't, you can't. I mean, if that's what you're saying, we had a slower match because that's what they're used to doing. Like, yeah, we're not doing any of that stuff. So, um, but, but that was, that was that, like, how do we, how do we get, uh, tell this story, but, but have the tag titles be around it. I actually don't know who beat us, uh, in the future. Like who was the next team that beat us? Uh, and we'll maybe, get there and just... yeah, maybe we can look that up. Yep. We'll get there in one second. What was it like also working with Hardy's now that we've mentioned them? You got to be excited oh, yeah. now tagging against the Hardys. And yeah, for sure. Them. Look, I, but, but I do still think like, even at this time when we were kind of hot still, um, these were the young up and comers that were surpassing us. We were, we were kind of standing still and they were, they were going forward. And so it was a pleasure to work with those guys. It was, it was, I'm glad it didn't last too much longer. Cause I think honestly, and the observer was not wrong. And so, so I don't really, I only hate them cause they they're honest. Um, but <laughs> we, we slowed them down. You know what I mean? That's all there yeah. was to it. We, we were, we were not from that school of how you work that fast pace and all that. We didn't do that. And so it was, it was obvious, you know what I mean? Even the observer caught it. The match after yours is unforgive at Unforgiven was the kennel and a cell match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With we boss are... man, snow, and dogs. <laughs> I and think you remember, a quarter for you hey, bro, before that's pretty good. Hey, it's great because <laughs> literally what happened in this match was they got them dogs around that. They had a cage match or the cage around the ring and them dogs walking around and every dog out there just stopped and crapped. Like it was, it was <laughs> you know, some dogs are nervous poopers. All those dogs just stopped and cr- took a dog out right by the end. It was like, oh, great. Yeah, you know what I mean? What these great r- rabid guard dogs are just taking the a dog. The ironic part is you do this before every one of our podcasts so yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no normally normally come on you gotta go try normally i don't flush it and then when i walk (laughs) back in there it's a rib on myself you know what i mean i go like oh you son of a (laughs) who did this i've got kids i put a i did an upper decker in my wife's bathroom (laughs) just kidding that did i couldn't sit up i I couldn't different colors i couldn't sit up on there I couldn't sit. Up no, it just crush. Stand? No, it just crush. What about a stand? Oh, How I, high I guess is I it? could. I don't know. We should change the subject. <laughs> talking about <Okay. laughs> it's speaking poop. of poop. It's poop, you're talking yeah. about. You also that night you made the save for Xbox when Mr. Hughes. Yes. Uh, because Jericho obviously needed a heater, and Jericho attacked him <laughs> after Jericho's pay per view debut. Did you yep. think you were plans uh, of you guys taking on Jericho and Mr. Hughes, or was that just to advance their storyline? Yeah, I think it was to advance that storyline. And look, I, I I didn't doubt for a minute that we might work them on a television or something. And 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 you know because of that, it makes sense to have that tag match. So so, but I, I also think uh, people look at it so much differently today and so much more closely. Like I didn't, 
he was with Chris, like uh, he being yeah. Curtis Hughes was with Chris. Like if he saves Chris and x comes to save, like it makes sense that you would go to that tag match. Even if we never did, we could have, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't, I, I didn't used to look at it when I was on that side of the fence so deeply like, Oh, what am I going to do next week? It was just, Hey, send me my what paycheck. Do do? Yeah. <laughs> send me yeah. my paycheck. I send me my paycheck. I have these drugs ain't going to take themselves. <laughs> The next night was what we've already hit in that, the classic segment, Rock and Foley. Mm. With this is your life and the clown and all that draws the highest rating in wrestling television history. So without you and Billy defending uh, defeating him the week before, this might not have happened. I mean, it might I think have you never could, happened. You could get credit for this. We should get some, even if it's two and a quarter stars. You know what I mean? Like we could get maybe one star or something. I don't know. You we'll volleyed talk about the that. greatest segment ever. You turned in the history into- in the history of wrestling television, but it was also very entertaining. <laughs> it was awesome to watch. Yeah. Uh, by the way, for the record, that segment drew a 8.4. And like you mentioned, you've always thought that you've always thought, Hey, talking is better than wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, did this did you already think that did that confirm that or was no this no no, no. Of, I, I, look, I didn't to be quite honest i didn't think that until we started until i was a lead writer of a show and we started digging into the analytics and getting into the, the the actual ratings and seeing what draws more and what doesn't you know what i mean and look it was just a trend women wrestling always did better than men's wrestling and promo segments did better than the wrestling segments and that that's look it's not every single time um right. but predominantly that was the way it was and again this is 14 15 16 or, or 15 16 17 18 you know what i mean like that those those years or is when i was up there and had my hands on those analytics and, and i i took those seriously because i thought if i can figure out uh how to make people watch yeah. uh that that's the problem though you can have nielsen ratings figured out to a a T and you still can't figure out why people watch sometimes and why they don't watch sometimes you do you remember you mentioned before not really worrying about ratings at this time in your career do you yeah. remember it being talked about hey oh my gosh yes. we just got an a4 yes. yeah <laughs> yes. it was just chaos this this one was yeah this one was like holy mackerel we we can do this kind of stuff and and look i think i think it was the the uh like we really started they really started throwing everything at the wall you know what i mean and it was like okay we can get away with just about anything. And as long as we use our top stars, it'll draw ratings. You know what I mean? And so I don't know. I love being there for this period of time. Speaking of top stars, that same night, you and Billy team up to take on Xbox and Kane when they answer your what? open challenge. You know, that's on us. That's on me and Billy <laughs> for, for even opening, like an open challenge. What are you stupid? Like what? Uh, Kane <laughs> could come out here. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like, you don't want, ever want to hear you're going one-on-one with The Undertaker, and you never yeah. want to hear you're going two-on-two no. two versus X-Pac and Kane. X-Pac and Kane, yeah. You just, don't want to, you just don't want that. And so, really, I blame this all on Billy and myself. Well, luckily for you, after two minutes, the Hollies <laughs> would run in. Well, I was blown up then. I couldn't um, continue on. Yeah, so it thank seemed God. longer than two minutes for you, probably. Uh, and it seemed like for that night, DX had reformed while Kane looked like a lost puppy dog in the background. Was there talks of putting DX back together as a babyface group at this time or no? Yeah, I look, I, I touched on that earlier and I kind of still feel like it's the same. Like, I feel like it, they couldn't still have put us really. back together. Yeah, they, they couldn't have put us back together. It wouldn't have been the same. And yeah. even as a, like, we weren't baby faces. You know, we were heels that were cool. Um, and And that's, it sounds braggadocious for me to say that. And I apologize. I don't mean for it to, but sure. like we were, people wanted to hang out with us, but we cheated and stuff. And we were, you know what I mean? It was like, I won't uh, bring you home to my mom, but I would like to spend the evening with you. Um, <laughs> and so that was basically just me to Billy, like every night. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I used to bang Kane. Uh, anyway, no, I, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, but like that. What a, what, up with the what an idiot. That's big. What an idiot. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we said open, we said open challenge and here came Kane and x Pop. <laughs> now, what are you going to do, Billy? <laughs> the next night on SmackDown, you take on Jericho and it ends in a schmoz when Ooh. Curtis Hughes interferes again. This daggum Curtis. Curtis man. Hughes, bless his heart. 
He he's interferes narcoleptic. Again? He falls asleep standing up. I got a really? good story about that in a minute. Go ahead. Well, really? We're going to get there. All right. Uh, <laughs> Curtis interferes again, and the Hollies interfere. Were you mm-hmm. thinking the Hollies and the Outlaws were going to be a thing? Was that the talk? What did you think of Bob and Crash? Yeah, look, I thought we were going to work with those guys for sure, but I didn't think those were the guys that were going to beat us for the tag titles. You know what I mean? I thought like, okay, we'll run a, we'll run a program with these guys, a television program, maybe a pay-per-view or may, maybe not, you know, I don't. And so, yeah, I, I love working with them. Bob is uh, aggressive, very aggressive, but he's a great friend of mine. Like I bought four wheelers from him and we went over there and when he was racing and you know what I mean? Good, good friend of mine. Um, Beat you up in the ring, though. Beat you up, <laughs> just flat out beat you up. He and and crash, it. crash wasn't uh, wasn't afraid to hit you neither. And but but the good thing about that is, look, they weren't afraid to be hit hard. And and that's how it kind of was then. I think it's the same way now. I can't imagine it being any different. Is you give how you get in there. And those guys gave, and they got. You know what I mean? And they never came back and said, "Hey, man, you hit me too hard," or "Hey, it was." No, that's how we do it, and we bring it. And so, yeah, they were fun to work with. Let's go back for a second about the Curtis Hughes story. Yeah. I think it was one of my first matches ever. It may have been my very first match in uh, Richmond, Virginia, I believe it was. I went down to – I was in the the Marine Corps, and I was stationed in – Washington, D.C. And so I went down to Richmond, I think it was Richmond, to, to, to visit with my brother. And and uh, my brother and Tracy Smothers were a tag team at the time in WCW, so I went down there to see him. Turned out uh, my, my brother didn't show up, <laughs> so it was weird. So I uh, had Tracy Smothers had extra set of gear, let me wear the gear. I actually worked in my brother's stead against Terry Taylor, and on the outside was Mr. Hughes. The finish was I uh, I make my comeback on Terry. Terry gets out of the ring, runs around the corner. When I go around the corner, Mr. Hughes clotheslines me, throws me in the ring. Uh, Terry pins me. Like it was literally he rolls in the ring, takes the ref, clothesline, throw me back in, pin me. We ran around the ring about three times because <laughs> Mr. Hughes had fallen asleep, standing up on the apron, <laughs> standing there with his sunglasses and hat on, and he was literally asleep. And the second time we ran around, uh, Terry went, Curtis, Curtis, wake up. <laughs> As we ran past, we had to go a whole nother lap around the ring. And I was like, please clothesline me this time. I can't make another lap. Yeah. Bless his heart. He just falls asleep standing up. That's a, wait, did that's... he have narcolepsy or was he oh, just yeah. tired that night? No, oh, no, no he, had narcolepsy. He, would, he did that a lot. He would just fall asleep. But Incredible. Was standing there. Yeah. Very, very, he's a great guy though. I actually saw him not long ago. Still looks great. Uh, still doing good. <laughs> just, just sleep. Ringside seats and just decided <laughs> just, to cash out. Yeah, just sleep, dog. Boy, I, I, yeah, we, look, nobody here cares about my stories, but <laughs> growing up in church, at my, my parents' church, we had a guest preacher one time, and it was all a female. <laughs> and I look over, and her husband is cashed out, buddy. <laughs> He's dead <laughs> asleep. And He's a, I, I got to listen to her all the time. I told my mom, I said, hey, if he can do it, why do you always pinch me when I fall asleep? <laughs> That's she his to, wife. She, has said, she said, he's got narcolepsy. And I go, well, I don't think we can touch him. Did he get that from Armadillo? What does that mean? He's got lesions? <laughs> we are many. We are legion. Yeah. <laughs> narcolepsy. Mom, I'm five. <laughs> I thought it was leprosy. I thought he had lesions. Yeah, we bless were, his heart. He needed healed. Uh, anyway. All Micro right. Micro Baptist. You leave, <laughs> you leave for Europe and the Rebellion pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. Uh, what did you think of WWF running Europe-only pay-per-views? Was this exciting for you guys? Or were you like, oh, I, gosh. I don't know. Like, I even, even hearing about it now, I feel like. Well, that's not very smart. Like you're, Europe, right. Europe is. Uh, I mean, I guess it's. I guess it's big, but it just feels like you want this these pay per views to be, to be global if possible. But I don't know. I don't know what how we did this, or uh, but it seems like a bad business strategy. You wrestle Chris Jericho. He hits you with a low blow and gets the pin. But the real news how, is, how many, how many times is he going to beat me? <laughs> Maybe I am still what, with interference and low this. blows too. Low he, blows. Has he ever beat you tables. clean? No. Yeah, but he probably could because he's still wrestling. I'm <laughs> sitting here talking to you. 
Vince Russo and Ed Ferreira quit and go to WCW. You what were you? Th- what were your thoughts on it at this time? Well, tr- truth be told, at that moment we were like, "Yeah, well, good riddance." You know what I mean? We're yeah. gonna do. We're, we're gonna we we're gonna go. On, we're gonna go on without you. You know what I mean? And, and I don't know um, that everybody didn't kind of feel that way. And it, but but it was only because of like they left us. You know what I mean? They left us in the lurch. Um, but I don't know. I, I I don't know. We all kind of felt like good. Yeah. Keep, bye. We'll we'll just keep kicking ass. You know. You've said before. If anybody's listened to any of our um, other episodes, you've said many times the the key was and the motto was focus on us. If they if they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Don't yeah. look at anybody what, else. Well, what can what can you do? Right. You know what I mean? Like it's it's and, and it, I mean those were lessons learned in 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 business and life. Like that I wish I would have learned when when I when I learned them. Um, but but like that's that's true. You know what I mean? They you can't I can't do anything about it. All I can do is keep walking my walk or running my race or whatever. And so that's what we were doing. And we, and we honestly all had huge egos too. We thought we could do it without, we didn't, we don't need you. You know what I mean? We don't need those stinking badges. But it's also like other sports. You hear athletes say it all the time. It's a business. The bottom line yeah. is it's a business. Yeah. We've got to focus were, on our were, business. Yeah. Paying for their families and they had to do yeah. what they had to do. And I had to do what I had to do. You know what I mean? And, and honestly, again, we felt like, bye. You know what I mean? Smells like something died. (laughs) Well, bye. (laughs) Uh, When you get back, there's a Raw to be had, and you guys are in a four-way tag match Mm. with the Acolytes, the Hollies, X-Pac, and Kane. Outlaws and Hollies were counted out, and the Acolytes get the win. What's it like backstage that day with everyone knowing Russo and Ferrer are gone? Were you... Hey, we got we got a four way we got to focus on. That's a lot of chaos to deal with in yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look, I, I promise you, nobody went like, "Oh man, what do we do now?" Right. You know what I mean? Like, it just it's just not in any of anybody's DNA, and it's also not the nature of the beast. Like, people come and go. You know what I mean? Like, Razor and and Scott. I mean, and us, they're the same person. Razor and Kevin left. Like, yeah. holy mackerel! That's bigger than the writers leaving in our minds, you know what I mean? And so really we didn't have any idea. I didn't anyway, how them leaving was going to affect us. Um, and, and I guess the viewer would know more than I did if we continued on. Winter is there. And for me, that means struggling to find the right temperature when I sleep. But I recently found a way to stay at the perfect temperature all night long using silver infused bed sheets by miracle brand that were inspired by NASA. And you know me, I'm down here in Huntsville, Alabama, the Rocket City, which we love our NASA stuff. Here's what I'm talking about. Using silver-infused fabrics originally developed by NASA, Miracle Brand sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night. That's right. Self-cooling properties for better quality sleep. Plus, self-cleaning. What? These sheets are infused with natural silver They prevent 99.9% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than the other sheets. No more gross odors. And they make the perfect holiday gift. So go try miracle.com slash dog to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40% and be sure to use promo code D-O-G-G at checkout to save even more and get three free towels. You can use those for whatever you want. And Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you are 100% satisfied, you get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Brand. Go to trymiracle.com slash dog and use the code D-O-G-G to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over. 40% 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash D-O-G-G to treat yourself, a friend, or loved one this holiday season. Thank you, Miracle Brand, for sponsoring this episode. The next night in Long Island, New York tragedy would strike the WWF when Darren Drozdov is injured when a power bomb goes wrong. Yep. What do you remember of this unfortunate incident, Road Dog? Well, you know, so a lot of time, Draws is a great guy. Draws is a man, such a, you know, uh, 
tragedy to happen. And it was a tragedy and it was just a tragic accident. And, and the thing about this is I've seen that happen a bunch where people get hurt and get carted out. It's happened to me several times. You don't ever think you're not going to see them again. You don't ever think they're not going to walk again. You just think they took a bad bump. It happens a lot. And so you never, um, like even when Owen, uh, the Owen scenario, even when they wheeled him back, only when they wheeled him back past me, did I realize something would really bad had happened because they were trying to resuscitate him, trying to, they were giving him CPR. And so with draws, it was just, Oh, somebody got hurt. Put them in the ambulance. You okay? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like whatever. And they go off and then you go, Holy crap. What happened to him? You know what I mean? And so it's yeah. Tra tragic accident. And, and it's, I don't know. I don't know. I hate that it happened to him because he was a great athlete and a great guy, um, just full of life. And I just hate that for him, you know. Again, in other sports, you see it. They get hurt. Let's take a moment. Let's pause. Let's send good yeah. thoughts to our buddy. But we got to continue. The show must go on. Yeah. And and that's and that's sad but true. Uh, it's true in a lot of industries, not just ours. You uh, you move on and you continue working. You lose to Bob Holly. And you and Billy beat up the Hollies after the match. You worked with Bob before. Yeah. Um, you mentioned it a little bit. He worked stiff. Anything else about Bob before? That's he why we continue? beat him up afterwards. Because he just <laughs> stiff and beat me and beat me up. And then I was like, Billy, help. And uh and thank thank you, Billy, for coming in and beating him up for me. Uh but yeah, no, Bob was just a good guy. Good guy from Mobile, Alabama, hometown dude that that just uh but he was a badass, you know, and he, he didn't mind uh, going off on you and he didn't mind telling you how he felt. And he didn't look, I, I grew up with that. So it wasn't, it wasn't that strange to me. Uh, some people got thought he was, Oh man, what's the matter with Bob Holly? He just tells you how he feels. You know what I mean? He's yeah. he doesn't have a filter. And if you got a problem with it, he might punch you. And again, I was raised around, uh, I was raised in that. Um, so, so it wasn't so strange to me. I love Bob. He, um, as a fan at that time, I just, I remember always with Bob Holly, I thought, well, that guy looks like a g legit Bravo alpha guy. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. a badass. Yeah. And he, and he was shaped like that and yeah. he worked looked that way. Part, yeah. But yeah. All of his work looked that way. And so, yeah, I loved working with him, man, because I knew our stuff was going to look good. As it was going to hurt like hell, but it was going to look good. <laughs> <You're> gonna... <laughs> uh, as we progress through the year. Gorilla Monsoon passes away on October 6th. Yep. What were your experiences with Gorilla? How, what was your well, relationship to, with him like? I, I hate to bring this up now, especially since we were just talking, talking about him passing, but the one, I really only had one run in, I guess you would say with, with Gorilla. And it was me and kid were on in the dark mat, me and Jeff and kid and razor were in a tag in a dark match somewhere at a, at a television. And, uh, kid took a wonky bump and hurt his neck. And, and when we got back there, gorilla, like went off on me, um, for like hurting kid. And I, I didn't do it. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was just something happened where he took a weird bump or whatever. And, and it, it rang his bell and hurt his neck, whatever. Like it was just something, but like gorilla went off on me about being reckless and you're, you're reckless out there. You're going to hurt people. And I had just got there. So I, I thought like, man, what that guy hates me already. Like what did right. I do to him? But that was the only time I ever really talked to him. And I'm not even kidding. Like he wasn't right. around a lot. And when he was, it was, he was in the office with Vince or he was some, you know what I mean? So I didn't see him a whole bunch. I just got yelled at him the one time and I'm sorry he passed away. At Raw at the Georgia Dome, the show draws 33,375, mm. which is one of the biggest crowds in the history of the WWF at the time, let alone for a TV show. Billy pins Crash in 48 seconds, but Hardcore Holly knocks both of you out with a scale. Oh, um, wow. yeah. Hey, so those will get you. You're still fighting the scale. I'm still fighting the scale. I've been yeah, fighting the scale these since I was scales, five. These scales have been kicking my butt <laughs> for a quarter of a century now. 
Um, but uh, yeah, that's interesting, right? Uh, but, but what's interesting is Billy can beat his partner in 40 seconds, but the other guy beat the crap out of me. Um, so I get it. I get it. Uh, I'm not very good at this. I understand. Um, what were your thoughts at the time on this huge crowd? Do you remember Buzz about it? Hey, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. But, but, but truth be told, uh, there were sellouts in a lot of places that was... 25,000, 26,000, you know what I mean? Like there was big sellouts, 18,000, whatever, big sellouts in these venues prior to that. So this was, in all honesty to us, just another Manic Monday. You know what I mean? Like it was, it did. It was just a huge house and rightfully so, we're doing great business, like whatever, you know? And so again, that's where my head was at during that time frame. The Rock and Man come, come together in the main event of Raw to take on Val Venus and Davy Boy Smith, and it ends with the epic rock bottom on Davy Boy into a thing of dog crap. <laughs> wait, um, I wait. thought Vince Russo was gone at this point. Um, <laughs> wait, he really did him rock bottom to been dog crap? Yeah. Did you just you just made that up, did you? No, no. No, that's a legit <laughs> thing. I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, it's gonna make me throw up too, thinking about my back smushing and dog crap <laughs> what's worse being um rock bottom into a uh, table or dog crap okay ta- uh dog crap is worse dog, dog crap, crap is yeah. worse okay. yeah, yeah yeah put me through 10 tables <laughs> stack them up one on, one on top of the other um all right uh you mentioned it uh, but just want to double check. Do you know at this point any uh, contract negotiation issues with Jeff and the no, WWF? No, Have y'all I started didn't. Chatting about it. No. Well, we, and look, even if we were talking, and we were talking then, but even if we were in communications, we wouldn't have talked business because that's not. He and I were friends on a different level than. Hey, my contract's up. I'm gonna yeah. ask for this, or I'm gonna ask for that. Like that's not that Jeff doesn't talk about that, and and I respect that about it. And so yeah, I had no idea of any contract negotiations. The next night at SmackDown, the Rock and Sock Connection team up again to take on you and Billy in the main event for the WWF Tag Team Titles. Mm-hmm. Hardcore Holly hits Gun with the title belt, and Mankind gets the cover and the oh. victory to a huge pop. Did you think it was too soon to take the titles off you guys? Come on. We need no, a, we need no. a longer run. <laughs> no, not at all. You heard <laughs> you, it read. You just read a huge pop. Like, obviously, they <laughs> like them being the champions more than they liked us being the champions. Um, but, I look, I don't I don't think it was too soon. You, you heard that, you know, man, uh, uh, Hunter beat Mick one night in a three-way and the next night he'd be, so you know what I mean? Whatever, however that went. But like, so they were tra- changing titles hand over fist and every time. So I, you know, look, would I have liked a longer reign? Of course, but that's not what the cards had in store, you know? At no mercy. And I have to ask this because there's a lot going on at the time. This is from hardcore Holly's book. Yeah. When Jared confirmed with his wife that the money over 300 grand had arrived in his account he brought his bag in, got dressed, and stayed away from everybody. Road Dog, being the loyal friend he is, stayed by Jeff's side. We got to ask, was this really what happened? You rode with Jeff that day, right? Yep, yep, and it is exactly what it. we're talking about the uh, the uh, match with China. Yes, this is where. Yeah, so so look, I always heard it was two hundred fifty grand. Um, but I don't doubt one minute that it was 300 and I don't doubt one minute. Look, he, nobody said anything to him and he was the intercontinental champion and his, and his contract lapsed. Now that's a incredible, that's, that's incredible. You're the champion that's a and, sign. It, and the second champion and your contract lapsed and nobody says anything. And so he, he had him where he wanted him and he had, and he wasn't going to come back there right away. And so like, it's, it, it is kind of burning a bridge to do him that way, but, it's business. And you know, he was back again three or four times for between now and then because Vince realized it was business too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you got one over on me, kid, but savor the flavor because it won't happen again. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's exactly what happened. And I kept saying, Jeff, just let me take the title. I'll just take it and give it to him or whatever. And he was like, no, he wouldn't tell me still what he was doing, but he had that business brain working. Uh, yeah. So pretty sure you didn't know. No, I had no idea that was going down. Uh, I knew he was in talks with them about coming and doing the the match. Um, 
I went to the building by myself and, and, and I thought, well, I guess he's not coming and he wouldn't give me the title. So I don't know. Um, and sure enough, he showed up and did the match and, and did the honors. Uh, kind of hard to speak for somebody else, but at the time when you did finally find out, did you think it was smart for him to leave for WCW? Well, I look, I thought the two decisions went hand in hand. If you're going to get stick them for 300 K, you know what I mean? You're yeah. probably not going to be welcomed back, uh, anytime soon. So I think the other decision had to go with that one. Um, because I don't think he could have been as, uh, strict in his negotiations, uh, if he didn't have that in his back pocket, you know, uh, in the middle of all this, you've still got to wrestle. So let's talk about it. Uh, Bob and crash Holly beat the new age outlaws via DQ in 10 minutes and 11 seconds. A lot better than most WWF undercard matches. Whoa, now. Whoa. That's kind Whoa. of a praise. No, that was a backhanded compliment. <laughs> what? It was. Yeah. <laughs> it, what, what was the word he used? A lot undercard. better than most undercard matches. Uh, everyone had their working shoes on, and Bob Holly was very impressive, including throwing a perfectly timed high drop kick. The match got intermittent heat early through Road Dog's gyrations. Oh. Oh. You got had heated. working shoes on and doing gyrations. <laughs> and doing buddy. gyrations and heating the place up, apparently. Uh, Dog used a top rope suplex on Bob. What? Billy That's Gunn got a strong hot tag, and the crowd even reacted big to it, giving both men press slams and then used the jackhammer on Crash for oh, a yeah. near fall. Bob got a chair and threw it in the ring, but Billy grabbed it and gave Crash the famouser on the chair. The ref saw the chair and DQ'd the outlaws. Oh. After the match, Road Dog looked like he really was doing it doggy style to Bob <laughs> and gave the pump handle slam to Crash. Whopping two and three quarter stars. Two and three quarters. What was the last was one? Two and working. a half? Nope. Two and three quarter. Two and oh, a quarter. Two and a quarter. And this is so what? Two a, and three quarters? Yeah, you got a half a star better. Popular. With your working, working shoes, shoes on. on. You know, I'm glad I I'm glad my work impressed you this time, Dave Meltzer. <laughs> That's oh, close ye, to oh, a three. Ye, oh, you ye can who round has up never, to a three. Never stepped foot in a ring. <laughs> but you tell me how good I am. I don't know. <laughs> Call me crazy. Well, what did you think of it? What do you remember this? Uh, it's a pretty damn good match. Let's just yeah, I don't remember it at all. <laughs> Being totally honest with you. That's probably why it was good. It was because I was unconscious uh, <laughs> during it. Um, but, but honestly, I don't. I don't remember that. You know what I mean? I don't. It's just another tag match. What, let, let, let's ask, do you, is it a combination? You, you, you've got extracurricular things going on in your body. You've all got Jeff above. walking out. Yeah, you've got a lot the, of things going on. A lot of things going on. Per, and this is 99. Yeah, so this is, there, are, there is a lot going on personally. Um, in addition to all the things you just said, Jeff, did you fall and, asleep like Curtis Hughes? I'm about to, <laughs> but no, I didn't this night. I didn't this night because, uh, I had cocaine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the no, match I, right after you. I hope you took a bump because Jeff took a bump. Yeah. Uh, Jeff is doing business for China. Any doubt that he would, regardless of if you knew the what was happening afterwards? What did you? What did so you? So I knew. I knew for a fact he had no problem doing a job for her. Right. But I also knew for a fact that he's a shifty businessman. Not shifty. I, that's the wrong word sly you know what i mean like he he's he's thinking about stuff like that when i'm thinking about hey my contract's coming to an end he's thinking about my contract's coming to an end if they don't say anything i could probably use that you know what i mean like his mind is working that way yes. mine never was so so i i don't know i i uh i don't even remember what you just asked me to be quite honest with you you answered it you didn't no oh, doubt that okay. he was going to do the job for China. yeah 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 he would he was not one because it's never been about uh, Jeff is a showman. Jeff is a showman from, from way back. And he knows, uh, you can win and you can lose as long as you do it. Right. Uh, While we're here, let's talk about it. You've, you've talked about how impressed and such a friend you were with China. How cool of a moment was it regardless of what happened that China is now the intercontinental champion? Yeah. Well, it's super cool. I mean, I, and, and it's awesome just because, you know what I mean? Like for one thing, she, she looked like she, she had a match with me. She had a match with Jeff for the, for the intercontinental title. Now this woman is the intercontinental champion in a, in a, in a man's, uh, 
category. You know what I mean? It was men's wrestling. The Intercontinental Champ was a men's title. And so she won it. Like, it's huge uh, glass ceiling being broken, but also, like, she looked like she belonged in there. Like, when she hit you with a clothesline, it was like getting hit by Jeff with a clothesline. You know what I mean? Like, it was, they were very similar in size, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. And uh, she could probably out squat him. Uh, but, but, like, so she fit in. She just looked like, she belonged there. And uh, I think she had some problems later on when they kind of had to say like, hey, you kind of need to start working with women. Like it was a step backwards, I think she felt. And I don't know if that's right, wrong or indifferent, but like, I do think, you know, you can't, it's weird to get heat on her, to beat her up and beat her. Like I, I yeah. hit her with punches and stuff. And it was like, oh man, <laughs> you know, like even watching it, it was like, oh, don't do that. Uh, just hug her. Yeah, um, yeah. but, but yeah, look, I knew Jeff was going to do the, do the honors and he did it with bells on and got paid to boot. Now we're out of the, we're out of the event. Did you leave with Jeff that night? Did you see him? What's happening right after yeah, that? Match? Yeah. What so we, <laughs> we left and went back to the hotel room, uh, knowing that I wouldn't see him again for the next until, you know, until we meet again, uh, the next day he flew one way and I flew the other. Um, so, yeah, so it was just, to me, it was genius. It was a, a stroke of genius, but it was also looked at as disloyalty by some. And you know what I mean? So you're going to get your, uh, people feel differently about Jeff. Uh, you know, when you get to know Jeff, you love Jeff. But if you don't know Jeff and you just, or they're on the outskirts, you might not think too highly of Jeff. And that's where I think a lot of people are, is that they don't, he don't let a lot of people in. And uh, when you get in, he's a great person, a great human being. Um, but people look, people look at Vince McMahon cause he's such a strict businessman and go, Oh my God, he's an a-hole. No, oh, he's got a heart too. And children and grandchildren, like he's a businessman. So he makes business decisions based on business ideas and business strategies. It has nothing to do with your personal feelings or any of that. It's just a business. And that's how, look, I don't look at it that way. I, I'm with everybody else. Like I go, Oh, don't fire that guy can't, you can take yeah. some of my money and pay him. You know what I mean? Like whatever, right. like, but, but businessmen don't think that way and thank God they don't or else their businesses would all go out of, out of, you know, if it was easy being a successful business person. You, yeah. Everybody would, would all be, be successful. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Um, I know you've mentioned it. You, if somebody leaves, you just focus on the prize, but this is your buddy. Yeah. Had to be happy for him in one sense. Like you said, he's pulled this great move. He's, he's helped himself in his bank account. But you had to be sad that your your buddy Double J is now leaving the company. I mean, yeah, of, co of course I was. Level. Yeah, and of course I was, and it was all personal. You know what I mean? And truth be told, everything I react to, I always react from it from a personal. Like it's all personal to me. But but Jeff leaving was personal because we traveled together. We stayed in the same hotel room. We 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 did a lot of did a lot of stuff together that I'm not going to be able to do with him anymore. Um, and so I missed I missed him. You know what I mean? I missed him as far as that goes. Um, but again, like you said, hey, man, make your money. You, this is about you and your family, not me and mine. You know, I'm going to make decisions based on mine. Let's talk about what else happened that night on this epic night. The epic Hardy, Hardy's and Edge of Christian ladder match. Mm. Uh, a lot of people say this really pushed them into the next level. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember about this time and the buzz around these two teams? Well, look, I remember... Holy mackerel, these two teams are doing this awesome stuff, and I can't do that. And me and Billy are definitely not doing that. Uh, so <laughs> so we were actually standing on the wayside watching the tag division go by. Um, but look, that's what that that's that's what happens. You know what I mean? People before me uh said that I was moving too fast and I was going too fast, and I was uh, you know, and so so it evolves and the business and the and the wrestlers evolve and they were getting younger and, and braver and faster. And I was doing the opposite of all that. You know what I mean? And so look, they were awesome in that ladder match, man. Some of those TLC matches changed the game forever. And, and I got no problem saying that like for, to, three years prior to that, the new age outlaws were the hottest thing going. But once they started that, those ladders and TLCs and all that stuff, man, we couldn't hang with that. And, and rightfully so. Like, I don't, I don't feel bad about not being able to, you know? 
Did you ever think of advancing yourself to the next level by going like Lita and wearing your thong out of the top of your pants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I did that, that a few had to times. Your mind, I right? did that a few times. Well, it, something ran was through house my show? mind. I don't remember seeing it on TV. No, it was tele televised, but it was in oh, Canada. What? It was in Canada, so you probably didn't see it. <laughs> that's, um, that's probably why Bret Hart's mad. At you. Yeah, but it was it was black and leather and studded. Um, <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Had one big stu stud on the inside of the ball. <laughs> Just to make on. sure it didn't move around. Come on, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, later that night, a Hunter retained the WWF title in a no holds barred match against Steve Austin when The Rock accidentally hit Austin to help Hunter oh. retain. Big moment he, there. Hey, did he do it on purpose? Oh. Or was it an accident? What? Was it inadvertent? Or, yeah, makes you think. What? Yeah, yeah. What? I'm going to have to go rewatch it. Yeah, he might have did it. it on purpose. They, they could have. All right, the next night. They were the, jealous of each other. <laughs> they were both so hugely over. The next night on Raw, the Rock and Sock connection would team for the last time and drop the titles to the Hollies. Mm. While you and Billy took on the Acolytes, you guys won the match, but one of the ropes came off. Oh, During the I match. remember that. Oh, I remember this. And was used to bust Billy open. Wide open. Busted him. Ron Simmons just grabbed the turnbuckle and hit Billy in the head with it. Like, and it was Dang. just metal everywhere and just busted his head open. And look, we had it what we thought was a decent match. Now, having said that, a decent match with them is just surviving. So, so <laughs> we were already going to get the crap beat out of us. Then the top rope breaks. Now we got no running spot. So we got no hope. We got to lock up with these guys and stay clung together uh, until this match is over. So yeah, we got beat up bad that night too. Um, I maybe enjoy is the wrong word, but um, thoughts on working with Bradshaw and Farouk? I, to be totally honest with you, enjoy is the right word. Okay, I, good. We, look, we hit each other hard. <laughs> we, there was no doubt about it. We would hit Bradshaw. Of course, we all respected Ron so much. We didn't never hit him that hard, but uh, he didn't mind hitting us harder, putting me the F U slam. We, me and x -Pac called it the one where he would just catch you with one hand and put you down through uh, the ring. We call it the F U slam because he literally thinks about your well being and then says, yeah, F you. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but look, I did. I honest, I enjoyed my time with working with them, no matter whether it was with Billy or X Pac or whoever, I love working with those guys. They're, 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 they're good people too. And so I've been friends with Ron and with John, you know, for, for, like I said, a quarter of a century, half my life. And we always got along great and, and we had great matches together. I don't know. I loved working with them. I've never seen you and JBL together, but uh, I have met you individually and <laughs> Both of you make me laugh really, yeah. really good. So yeah. I can't imagine y'all two Charles together. A good, yeah, he's a fun dude to hang and out I, with. I want to start my wrestling character, Don Simmons, where I just say, dang. Oh, you say, poot. <laughs> <laughs> dang, man, poot. <laughs> All right. At the next TVs, and it's something we're going to get into later this year, yeah. DX is reformed. But what a look back at this week, man. What a good look back yeah. at rock and sock this week. Well, so, so I, yeah, I want to look, I, I, it's funny because I was literally with Mick today and you'll find out why in the future, but, but, uh, sp just spending time with him again and, and talking about, we literally talked about that was the rock and sock and how four of the of the teams or four of the five reigns we had, we beat him and four different partners. And, and, uh, that that's funny, but it's also like, I really took some liberties with him saying, you know, <laughs> like, you just, you're just not as good as the outlaws. I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, but we had some real fun with it. And, and so look, this was the rock was on top of the world. Mick is a genius. Mick always has been a genius. Mick was, a, I mean, think about the promos. Think about, so he told me a story, and I'll go into it briefly, about the night after Mania 14, I believe it was, when when uh, we, we got beat in the dumpster match in Mania 14. The next night on Raw, Terry, we, we had another match in a cage because the titles were held up because they buried me in the wrong dumpster. So, so the dumpster was supposed to be the other, just got to be your dumpster. Anyway, they so we put the titles up. Uh, in abeyance. And what that means is the title's not 
anybody doesn't have it. And so we would put the titles up in this cage match. We crucified Terry Funk and we beat mankind to death or, or Cactus Jack, whoever he was at the time, beat him within an inch of his life. And then as he was making a comeback and started to climb out of the cage to win, here came X-Pac, here came uh, Hunter in China. They beat him back in. We beat him. Bing, bang, boom. That was the night that DX was the new DX, DX 2.0, if you will, was... Uh, consecrated like we those guys were laying in the ring we were on top of that blue that blue unforgiving steel cage uh and dx the new dx was formed have i told you that story because mick remembers laying there on the he said i remember laying there as y'all beat the crap out of me y'all all went up there and as we went to commercial break they said still to come stone cold steve austin and they started chanting steve's name and mick said i'm gonna remember that and i'm gonna use this for oh. a promo in the future, but that's the way his mind works. It, it made him bad because we had just beat the fire out of them. And now the people have just moved on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was like, Oh man. And he, and he will use that kind of, uh, fuel, like tackling fuel, like Bobby Boucher, he'll use that kind of stuff to do his promos. And so look, he's always been a genius when it comes to character stuff. And, and so it was great to work with him. And like I said, Rocky was on top of the world. Um, it was great at this point, just being in the ring with him, uh, what was a positive. And so, yeah, I loved working with him and I loved taking this trip down memory lane, uh, talking about him. We got a couple of fan questions. I got one right. question before we get to those. Um, I think it was your boy Hunter. I can't remember what show he said it on, but said that Mick used to travel with his clothes in trash bags. Did you ever oh, see yeah. that? Oh yeah. Yes, a hundred percent. And <laughs> and that's and look, Mick don't care. And would wear clothes on top of clothes, so he wouldn't yeah. have to check bags, yeah. the whole deal. And and he and he didn't he doesn't would stay on to he'd stay on fans' couches, right? To the, yes, to this day, excuse me, to this day. He don't have a problem with you knowing that. He don't have a no, problem yeah, with telling yeah. you that. Like, it's like, yeah, luggage is expensive. My handle broke. I, I took a bag. What do you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. He would just, so he, he would, he's one of the best guys I've, I've ever known. One of the best fathers. And I've said this before. I would get on the plane in Pensacola when he lived down here near me. And he would be in first class with like one of his children, like in their pajamas and they're going, we're going to TV. And I'm like, Mick, why aren't your kids coming with you to TV? He's like, well, after that, we're taking a trip to here and we're going to go see this and we're going to go do that. And man, I always thought what a great dad he is and what a piece of crap dad I am. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not bringing my kids on any of these. I can barely survive myself, much less pull my child around with me. Um, but I always respected him for that, man. He's got, and, uh, and he talked today about, about Dewey. Dewey worked with me in the WWE for a little while and Dewey was the one I'd see him with. We went on the cruises, uh, and there, there would be Mick and, and I'll never forget. They said, Hey, buy some suits and, and dress up nice. So me and Billy went to like, I look, I'd never worn a suit. I wore a military uniform. I never had a suit. I didn't have a suit. I had to go to men's warehouse and buy these suits to wear on this cruise. And I get on the cruise and there's Mick in his flannel and his sweatpants. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't have to spend $3,000 on suits. I'm never going to wear again. Uh, but I did look good in them. Um, but, <laughs> but Mick looked fine too. And he didn't spend a dollar. You know what I mean? So I think he's, uh, I think he's on to something with, uh, with how frugal he is to be quite honest with you. All right, let's get to a couple of fan questions from our Twitter. Follow us at you didn't know pod at Brian RD James at the Casio kid. Austin Williams hit us up. Austin yep. says, uh, speaking of rock and sock, how different was their chemistry from all the rest of the tag teams in WWE at the time from the normal teams you faced? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, it was, it was definitely, uh, a unique chemistry, but that's what was so awesome about it was like, look, me and Billy were pretty hot. You know what I mean? They put us to get back together. We won the titles. They popped on it, but, but then, uh, they popped bigger when the other team won. You know what I mean? So, so it was, oh crap. I forgot the question. Hold on. Don't tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. Their chemistry. Yeah. Their chemistry was so it was, that's what I loved about them is they were, uh, Total polar opposites, but they were so over that no matter what you did in the ring with either of them, it got a great response. And so look, when you have two guys that are that over, um, 
And especially, man, I mean, look, they proved they didn't even need us to do an 8.4. They just did it by themselves with a promo saying, you know what I mean? So the fact that me and Billy could get in there and get, and get in the ring with those guys well, was a pleasure and an honor. I loved the dynamic that they had. It was the odd couple. It was Mick being every man's jovial fool and rock going, if you, it doesn't matter what your name, you know what I mean? And so it was a, the perfect dynamic, man. It, it was awesome. We've hit on it before, but it's a good way to go out. Um, WWE Master 2018. Cool. Well, that's a D. There's many levels to that. There's, there's a lot to unpack. WWE Master 2018 says, uh, we, we touched on it. Do you remember the dog poop angle with Bulldog and Rock? You, do, you, you don't remember it. I did not remember, remember it. it. Yeah. How Let me that... ask you this. Do you think it was... Uh, Shoot poop or work poop? <laughs> you think it was real dog poop? You think it was shoot poo or? Yeah. I don't do know. Think, I don't know. If you had to guess, uh, do you think it was fake? No. Or do you think they I scooped think, up some? No, I think it was, it had to have been fake something, right? What? Oh, God. I don't know. Serve? I don't want to talk about it. Maybe a baby Ruth. Will you text your boy <laughs> The Rock or I will. somebody I will and, and say, find was out. it real dog hey, man. poop? Did you slam Davy in that poop? <laughs> hey, dog, who, who you slamming that poop? <laughs> if you were involved, would you say, hey, make it real dog poop? Yeah, so I'll get I would. Out? I'd say I really want to throw up. If we're going to do it, let's do it, right? God almighty, there's nothing like kicking an old pile and it just breaks open <laughs> that loaf. And that <laughs> well, you like working stiff. That could have been one of them chalky <laughs> stiff ones, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to run You're the gonna tape back. You're going to eat white dog <laughs> We're gonna have to run the tape back. I don't know if it was a stiff piece or like yeah, old I or fresh. See it. I want to see it. I want to see if it matched on his back. It was like a it's five dollar hot and ready. I don't know. Uh, if it was, <laughs> I just might, might have been one of them security dogs uh, <laughs> from the from the dog kennel match. <laughs> they seem to be regular. Dog, buddy, uh, always a pleasure to chop oh, it man. up with you, man. This is yeah, a fun topic. You. This was a fun topic. And, These guys and, and are great. What a great time. I mean, I know it won't air this way, but the date we record on is the date to 23 years later that they did that great segment Incredible. that did it at 8.4. Like, it's just, I don't know. When I see stuff like that, I call it a God thing, man, because it's uh, things line up like that, and you just go, well, that's... That's not a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's a, it's pretty I, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And 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 speaking of amazing, we have an amazing team. Uh, Derek did the research yes. for this video. Wesley is producing tonight because Steve Kaufman is on a crack bin bender. Um, <laughs> Dominic is also <laughs> also with us. Um, I thank don't, you guys. Yeah, thank you guys very much uh, as usual. And thanks for the pod pound, the dog pound, what the, the whole, whole pound man. puppies. <laughs> I don't know where I was going. Yeah, the pound furnums. Um, we'll, <laughs> it's still a work in still a work in progress. I like the I like the pod pound though. Pod pound's pretty good. All right, you, next week. Hey, you betcha. Next week we've got a uh next week we've got a, a topic I'm not sure if you're gonna know much on. Oh good. Um, it's called the Armstrong family. We'll see what Look, we can do. I'm just going to shoot the breeze and we'll just flow through it and see if anybody buys it. We'll improv it and see what happens. That's what we do. That's how we do. Second City. Buddy, thank you again for your <laughs> hey, time. Thank you. thank you for everybody for watching, for listening. Like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you thought. Let us know what Road Dog got wrong. Let us know <laughs> whose name I pronounced wrong. For Clone Rad Thompson, he's the Road Dog. <laughs> Amen. If you, do, if you don't like this show, yeah. we got two words for you. Suck it. Oh, oh you oh, did it. Sorry, my bad. That was hard Oh, that you time. didn't know? Yeah, I was trying to put some, <laughs> put some bass in it. Yeah, <laughs> put some bass in it, Junior. You hadn't done it like that in a while, son. You're bringing the bass. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks, Cassio. Let's send them home. And let's just tell them, hey, drive safe, you know? Tell your people you love them. Get a DD. Yeah, if I don't see you for mating season, F yourself. <laughs> <laughs>